my first impression of Sophie was that she was nervous. I felt comfortable with her because I could sense she really wanted to get to know me. I always knew Allie was a really smart girl. Even like when she was really little, she kind of just had this old soul about her. She would tend to, you know, pay attention more to the adults in the room than watching kids TV shows or books. Because Allie's nonverbal, unfortunately kids her age don't really talk to her very much. And I think it's maybe because they feel like she wouldn't understand what they have to say or be interested. Or maybe they're just uncomfortable. I don't feel overwhelmed when Sophie talks. My brain can keep up even if my body can't. I don't like it when people slow down. I can understand things in normal time. This is what the friendship circle's about. It's a culture where typical kids pay attention and read between the lines as to what can be communicated without words. And being heard means the world to kids like Allie who spend their lives being largely ignored. I learned that I have a lot to teach people about different ways of communicating. I like being able to play with Sophie because she is trying to understand me and that is what friendship is all about. These girls have really had an amazing impact on each other. And in fact, Sophie wrote her college essay about their friendship. Dear Tulane University, Sophie talks a lot. This, this sentence, sentence populates the, the teacher's, teacher's comment, comment section of my high school report card. When people envision the stereotypical kid who talks too much, they probably see a student who annoys or distracts their teachers. But this is not who I am. Talking is my favorite mode of communication, not disruption. My words are a canvas of whys, ifs, buts, and hows that help me paint a picture of the world for myself and others. But talking isn't the only mode of communication, which is something I discovered six years ago when I joined the Philly Friendship Circle. The Friendship Circle is an organization that pairs neurotypical teens with teens who have special needs, acting as a vehicle for creating new friendships. There I came to appreciate the beauty of many communication styles. It doesn't matter if a person has different needs than me. A friend is a friend. Initially, because I'm extremely verbal, my interactions with my friend Allie, who is nonverbal, were challenging. I needed to slow down and pay close attention. As an avid talker, I'm both intrigued and challenged by the encounters I've had at the friendship circle because many of my friends communicate differently than I do. Allie communicates with me through noises and facial expressions. And because I've spent a lot of time with her over the years, I know what she's saying through her physical behavior. In fact, one Sunday, I was in dance class with Allie and right as we were about to begin, she plopped right down on the ground and cried out loudly. Immediately, I knew she was not in the mood to spin, twirl, or dance. So I plopped down next to her. At first, we sat silently, but I could see that she needed some cheering up. So I talked about anything and everything, because that is what I do best. As I talked, her frustrated expression disappeared and smiles and laughter emerged. We remained on the floor for about two hours enjoying our conversation, even though she had a different way of participating in it. Despite our differences, we've been able to establish a valuable connection, and that opens my eyes to the possibilities of other friendships. The Friendship Circle continues to teach me that communication comes in a variety of forms, and talking is just one of the many.